everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I have something very exciting to share with you all. For those who may not know, recently I did another Choose Your Adventure story using polls where you guys voted on the actions of our character. When we finished each part, I asked whether or not anyone would be interested in me reading this on a video, and the majority said yes. I'm going to be reading the tale that I crafted with your decisions and I got art commissioned by my amazing friend Piper to be included throughout. So even for those who read the story before, you'll still get some great artwork to go along with it during key scenes, and you'll see my take and how I imagined reading it while writing. But before we begin, a huge shout out to my patrons. Doug1185, Three Moons, Slightest Wild, Fizz, and Thistle. Thank you all so much for supporting me. Links to their social medias are in the description down below. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into the video. Before we start the video, I would like to wish a super happy birthday to a very special fan with a sandwing named Cinder. I hope you've had the absolute best birthday ever, and I wish you nothing but happiness this year. You're the best. And now, on to the story. Remember, none of this is canon, it's just a fan story written entirely by me. And we started out with a journal entry from our protagonist, an assassin in the scorpion den. The scorpion den has been buzzing with a new feeling lately. I don't know if I like it. I've been here for so much of my life that it's felt like no matter where I go, I always am brought back to the den. It's my home, my life, my everything. It's more important to me than the sand beneath my paws and the sun above my scales. The scorpion den itself almost feels like a family to me, and any dragon knows when his family is hurting, scared, or different that day. I think it's how I know something is wrong here. I remember the day Thorn was chosen as queen and left our home, taking residence in the palace. I do miss her and Keebly greatly, but part of everyone here has be felt betrayed in a way. It was part of how we all dealt with the loss. Well, those of us who show our care, at least. I know everyone here does care for something. Even the vendors have their stories. Things had gone back to normal in the months following Thorn's departure deeper into the kingdom. Bandicoot took over most of Thorne's previous positions, and the others fell into the talons of several dragons she had known. That's not what has caused this feeling within me. The rest of those days have passed, but a new feeling has crept its way to block the sun. I'm not the only one who's been noticing it. Yucca, my trainer in the arts of combat, recently became my equal again. Bandicoot reassigned her from training to necessary assassination work alongside me. It's given us more time to talk and worry, and though she grows old, Yucca remembers much of the days before even Thorn. My whole life in the Scorpion Den, she has told me stories of Vulture, who switched his force to underground work in the den after Thorn showed her power. He was someone never to be messed with, a threat greater than one dragon or even an army could take. The thought of Vulture's return with Thorn's absence in the Scorpion Den is worrying, but an idea I cannot refrain from entertaining. Prairie set down her quill and sighed, rereading the journal entry a few times before closing its pages gently. She ran a talon over its smooth, leather surface, her mind not leaving those thoughts. If Yucca is right, Vulture could come back. Bandicoot isn't wanting to do anything, and Thorn is too busy to talk about protection. But I can't let this happen. I have a bad feeling about what's going on in the scorpion den right now. The looks of fear hidden in the eyes of wandering sandwings, the way everyone seems to leave quicker when the moons rise, it's like he's already back. Bree stood up from her ground pillow, leaving the journal tucked safely beneath a wooden desk in her tent. She peered out sky outside into the night sky, the moons gracing the grounds and waters with their midnight light. The scorpion den, it was too still, too quiet, until the sound of dragons in front of her tent caught Prairie's attention. The Sandwing had learned a lot from the dragons who came from the Scorpion Den, and recognized instantly the uneasiness in their movements. They eyed the surrounding desert, looking for any eyes or creatures who could see them. There were three, and they were Sandwings clothed in black robes. Eerily familiar black robes, the same kind of adornments Vulture would wear in the story Jekka told her. I have to make a choice, she told herself in a breath. I have to tell Thorn. If anyone has a chance of stopping Vulture's followers, it's her. She beat him once, and if he's still out there trying to hurt innocent dragons, she'll do it again. I know her. Prairie carefully slowed her breathing, heart thumping softly in her chest. The cloaked dragons had moved on, slithering through the doorway of a nearby building. When they entered, the building's lights grew dark. Simming assassin couldn't help but stare, eyes locked on the entrance. Thorn needs to know before it's too late. I have a bad, 
bad feeling about this. The sun peered out slowly over the sand dunes, its light reaching all throughout the kingdom of sand. Fury blinked away the early morning light, the wind blowing harshly beneath her wings. After writing a note to Yucca telling her what she was doing, Prairie headed straight to the Sandwing Palace. There was no time to send a letter to the Queen, not if a group of Vulture's followers were planning something in the night. Before noon she arrived, talons outstretched to meet the warm morning sand on the ground. The stronghold was busy, dragons flying everywhere overhead. Prairie couldn't keep track of them all. Most were Sandwings, all very different, but a few Skywings landed beside her. Everyone was going their own direction, dragons bumping into each other and shouting in the frenzy. Prairie shook the sand off her scales, head turning to view the palace entrance. How on earth am I going to get a private room with Thorn? Especially with the palace like this, I don't stand a chance. It would take too long to fly to Jade Mountain and convince her daughter Sunny, and Smolder's in the Sky Kingdom meeting with Ruby. Looks like I have to try this myself. Word from one of Thorn's guards was not reassuring. Two days. Two days? Prairie repeated, stepping back. This is serious. Vulture could have returned. I saw some of his dragons meeting last night in secret. The Scorpion Den is on edge, and without the Queen there to protect us anymore, I'm worried we may not last during an uprising like this. Look, the guard replied, sighing. If Vulture is actually out there plotting his revenge, Thorn will stop him again. I'm sure there is nothing to worry about. Perry scoffed. So much for the help, Iguana. He rolled his eyes. I thought you den dwellers were supposed to be tough. Thorn's too busy to help you. Can't you look into it yourselves? Prairie looked at the ground, closing her eyes with a deep breath. Maybe he's right. I just thought she was the only dragon who could help us. It can't just be me, can it? I don't think I'm strong enough to save my tribe like this, but I have to try. If I waited two days, who knows how much further Vulture's cronies could get in their plan. I need to know more what they're up to if I want to stop them. If I want to save the scorpion den and the world behind its walls. The Sandman was so lost in thought that she didn't notice another dragon next to her until they bumped shoulders as he was walking. Sorry, a gruff voice said. Prairie looked up, and her heart skipped a beat at the sight. He was wearing black robes with a gold lining, the same as the ones those Sandwings were wearing in the scorpion den, the same as a vulture in the stories. The dragon continued walking, eyes wandering around the palace hallways as he raised up his hood. A small shimmer of light against a shiny surface caused her body to freeze. A knife. And he's headed right to Thorne's throne room. Prairie's mind overflowed with thoughts and emotions, but in all her assassin years, she could quell them easily. Focus. If I even want the chance to save the scorpion in for Vulture, I have to stop his followers from killing the only dragon who can help me. The Samning followed the cloaked dragon from behind, blending in with the crowd. It was a perfect time for him to strike, in the morning chaos. With so many dragons at every turn, one walking by coolly and quietly would go completely unnoticed by the guards. Prairie knew better than to let her eyes leave him. She kept behind at a distance, chest rising and falling in deep breaths. Prairie's dark, lingering gaze was transfixed on the robes of the Sandwing. It was not long until they turned a corner to the entrance of Thorne's throne room. Admittance was blocked by a large wooden door, with guards lined up at its frame. The follower of Vulture said some words to the other Sandwings, and the door opened. Black robes of the gold lining, Prairie realized. Nearly all of the guards standing watch are working with Vulture. This is not good. He's been working agents in a thorn circle for months, maybe even years. Vulture wasn't just sending one assassin after her. He has an army right under her wings. Right in everyone's home. Prairie stepped closer to the entrance, for a better view, when suddenly one of the regular Sandman guards was thrown to the floor. A follower of Vulture grabbed his arm and held him down. The dragon looked on with surprise and outrage, helplessly laid against the stone below. Traitors in Thorn's palace! She'll kill you, he huffed, struggling against the intruder's grasp. The other cloaked sandwings laughed, the few normal guards held by knife point, too. Vulture has been playing the long game, a smooth female voice said from behind a black hood. That's something Thorn never understood. You cannot remove our rightful ruler from his power, not even in exile or death. You may think your queen stands a chance, but Vulture won the moment the Eye of Onyx was first in her talons. The traitor stepped back, letting another of Vulture's followers hold down the squirming Sandman guard. He was hissing with great fury, talons twitching as he helplessly watched her enter. Prairie's eyes grew wide, rage boiling behind, behind her scales. They're going to kill her. 
You think I came here to ask Thorne to help save us? Now I'm going to save her from one of the biggest assassination attempts in Puria. Puri let the muscle memory from training guide her, body moving without thought. Her mind was focused and sharp, analyzing every movement of the cloaked sandwings with great accuracy. She ran forward, claws digging into one of their sides. The ragged she hit whirled to face her, hissing at the tear in his robes. The silky material drew, grew a dark shade of red where Puri's claws had landed. Puri saw the female assassin growl and head straight into the throne room, following after. With one of the traitors distracted, their loyal guards fought back outside the door. Can't focus on them right now, Puri thought as she ran, but I hope they'll be okay. There are tons of healers in the palace, and the guards should be able to hold their own until I stop the final one up ahead. She ran as fast as her claws could take her, jumping on the cloaked sandwing. Thorn was on the ground in front of her throne, the string of the Eye of Onyx wrapped tightly around her neck. Pretty metaphor, isn't it? The assailant laughed. The same jewelry that handed you this position is now going to be the thing that kills you. It's poetic in a way, especially after what you did to us. Puri shot a wave of fire at the sandwing and the queen. The assassin's cloak caught fire at the tip, and she shrieked as she tried to shake off the flames. Why do you save her? She spat. Thorne does not even know our names. She's no true sandwing, her loyalty lying only to herself. At least Vulture was there with us when Thorne took our homes, our treasure, our lives. I see you're from the Scorpion Den based off your tattoos. Don't deny what she took from you, too. The way she abandoned you just as she abandoned all of us. Puri's heart beat uncomfortably in her chest, but she drew a claw on the assassin's arm with its burnt and torn robes. Thorn stood shakily, panting. When I said you didn't know our names, the dragon continued, you didn't object. I'm Mamba, but I'm sure as the sand you wouldn't even have given a care to learn it. Savior of the Queen, you know what she took from the den, from all of us. Vulture is everything she's not. Loyal, brave, powerful, you know it. Mamba looked at Prairie with a mad frenzy in her eyes, mouth dry and open. Thorne held a claw to her shoulder and shook her head. You and Vulture know it doesn't have to be like this, the queen began. What you got, you stole. It was only obtained through hurt. It wasn't right to let you keep it and continue running the business as you were. Other dragons were just your tools to step on. I had to end it. Mamba tisked. You left us with nothing until Vulture came to raid. All of us are more than happy to meet his demands of your capture. You may lock me up today, but he will return and bend the bars of my prison. Only, he might not take you alive as I planned to, so that he could do the very deed so much earned above us all. You've hurt your tribe, Thorn, and there's no more running from what you've done. Momba and the others were held in a prison outside of the palace. With them out of the way, Thorns finally spoke to Prairie. What you did was very brave, she said. I'm proud to have you in my palace today. Prairie's thoughts were elsewhere, though. Her gaze lingered on the gently blowing sand beneath her. Do you really believe her? She began. Vulture and his followers think you took something from them. They're going to come back. They already managed to have a hold on the palace, and their influence in the scorpion den grows by the day. Who knows when they're coming next? And if Mamba's right, there will be no prisoners. Thorn exhaled softly, nodding. I've always been afraid my actions would lead to the hurting of other dragons. Those guards took no part in the capturing of Vulture's assets, and yet they lay in the infirmary tonight, their families having to wait to see them come home. Prairie looked up at Thorn, whose eyes were locked in the necklace dangling on her neck. My queen, Prairie began, I fear you worry your only value is in ruling us. The Thorn I know is brave. She's the leader of the Scorpion Den, a dragon of power and fairness and kindness. The dragon who has helped inspire so many of us back home, and who will continue to be told of in stories for lifetimes to come. Vulture doesn't have that benefit. He only controls their fear, but you rule with hope. I came here thinking I would need the help of someone who had battled him before, but I do not fear Vulture anymore. I've seen him and his followers in truth, and I know I have a weapon far greater than one dragon. We're going to end this, your majesty. We're going to stop Vulture. He's not going to hurt a single dragon ever again. Thorn gave a soft laugh. I know courage and resilience when I see it. I assure you won't. I assume you won't want to back down, even though this is my fight. This is not just your fight. He's in my home, hurting and pressuring my dragons. This is our war to stop now. That next night, Pur on the floor of the palace guest room. Thorne had been preparing for Vulture's eventual return, and Prairie refused to leave her side. 
Thorn was a member of the Scorpion Den still at heart, and she would never allow for more dragons of the den to be hurt by Vulture again. It wasn't until she saw several large wings blocking the moon that she realized he was already here. Vulture is heading for the palace, his army of black taking over the night sky. Could Vulture reach Thorn before I can find her? What if I face him alone and try to learn more, then exploit a weakness or trick him? What if he sent dragons to free Mamba and the others, and they're about to cause a massacre inside the palace already? Bree takes off the pure instinct before she even realizes she's moving. I only just spotted Vulture and his followers. If Thorn or her guards aren't nearby, he could kill them. I have to find her. We'll focus on the prisoners and confronting Vulture later. I just need to make sure Thorn is safe. Otherwise, this is all for nothing, and Vulture wins again. I can't let that happen. He's not going to lay a talon on my home again. With the moon's light blocked by the winged shadows of the dragons overhead, only candlelight illuminated the dark halls. Prey searched everywhere her mind could think of. Throne rooms, treasure vaults, kitchens, lounges, the royal bedchambers. But Thorn was nowhere to be found. It was the scraping of talons against the stone below that made Prairie's body freeze, tail barb twitching against all instinct. Ah, another dragon in the halls, a sickening voice said. His words were like a blade, sharp but slow. Vulture turned around a corner in the cold, dry hall, his figure casting dark shadows on the tile below. He loomed over everything in front of him, dark eyes full of hatred. What did you do to her? Prairie shouted, things protruding from her mouth. Oh, Thorn? Vulture replied. I will not be eating her in a moment. She's weak, and she cannot protect this kingdom. I know you are mad at me for attacking your queen, my fellow Sandling, but you have no idea the horror she had inflicted on our tribe. I can change the mistakes she made. I can take our tribe back to its days of loyalty, bravery, and strength. Vulture slowly took a step forward, and Prairie hissed. I come in peace, he continued. I know what is best for you. For all of us. You look like you're from the Scorpion Den, are you not? Prairie's eyes met the floor as she nodded. How could he know that? I see the markings on your scales. Each tattoo represents a kill, something my talons of power started before the war. It's good to know our traditions are still honored in the Scorpion Den, even after all this time. But you only have a few. Surely based on your skills and ready position, you're far more trained than just to have a few red X's on your completion list. Why did you stop showing it? How many dragons you've killed? I stopped seeing it as a badge of honor, Prairie said. Dragons from outside the scorpion den would look at my body and wonder deep in the back of their minds if I was the one who had been hired to kill their love. I didn't want that, and I felt disgusted when I learned the origin of that tattoo tradition. Lives aren't just a check mark in a book. They're not just ink on your scales. My time in the scorpion den taught me that, and I fear it's a lesson you never learned, Vulture. I know what you've done to my home. You call Thorn a monster for her mistakes, yet you've turned out into a horrible thing. Vulture's gaze grew angrier, body pressing harder against the floor. Whether you believe it or not, I don't like hurting Sandwings. We're family, especially if we're from the Scorpion Den. I do what I do to ensure the stability and strength of our tribe. With someone such as Thorn at the helm, we are doomed to suffer another war. There's unrest in our kingdom, but I can unite us. And it starts with the Den. Our home, Sandwing Assassin. Furry's thoughts came through her head like the wind in a sandstorm. Ideas, memories, dreams, everything came crashing down on her at once. The thought that he thinks we're the same sickens me, she thought to herself. But is he really wrong? I've hurt so many dragons, innocent ones, before I started working with Queen Thorn's associates in the Scorpion Den. I could have ended up just like him if not for Yucca and my hope and love for the dragons where I'm from. Then it hit her. You only tell yourself you love the dragons in the Scorpion Den, Prairie said. You only tell yourself you're just like us. And well, you're right in a way. You're not so different. A smile flickered on Vulture's face, the sight like a deadly poison. There's a key difference, though, she continued. You lack love. That's the only thing keeping the Scorpion Den together. With love comes hope, and with hope comes a future we can live for. You rip that from other dragons, do you claim to have it in yourself. You despise Thorn, but I think it's because you know deep down you're the opposite of her. She is who you could have been. A version of yourself with the same smarts and the same wits and the same resilience. 
There's one key difference between me, Thorn, the other Sandwings in our home, and you. You lack love, Vulture. It's a missing piece that has driven all those other traits away. It's why you're not like her, and you chose that for yourself when you started killing dragons. You chose that when you began stealing and tricking and recruiting. But most importantly, you chose that when you stopped loving. And now, you're too far gone to change back of that dragon you could have been. It's why you hate Thorn so much. You were almost her. Vulture stared at Prey with a look of pure fury and indignation. He lifted up the hood of his cloak, tongue flicking in and out of his mouth. You have no idea what love is, weak Sandwing. I'm going to take such great pleasure in killing you right after my tail barb goes through Thorn's heart. Prey leaned down, head facing Vulture directly. If a fight is what it's going to take, so be it. There's no hope for him now. Suddenly, a pale blur shot through the hallway. Queen Thorn was on top of Vulture, claws digging at his scales. Thought you could use some help, she shouted, tackling the behemoth figure. Vulture snarled and scratched, flames of fury erupting from within. Prairie and Thorn landed blows, slamming Vulture into nearby tables and portraits. He fought back, but was no match to the combined force of the young dragons. You fools, he screamed, cloaked torn and withered. I was the only hope for this kingdom, for this tribe. Now look where we'll go. You needed me. Within moments, Sam and guards stormed into the room. Underneath the silver moonlight, they grabbed Vulture, restraining his tail barb and claws. Thorn and Prey stood there, watching him fall. They panted heavily, scales bruised and bloody, but safe. Prairie allowed a healer to tend to her small wounds. She watched as Thorn walked over, already stitched up. The queen sat down in the infirmary bed next to her, nodding for the healer to exit. What you've done for me these past few days, Thorn began. I can never repay you for. Prairie smiled, looking at the Sandman Queen. Don't mention it. I took an oath in the Scorpion Den to protect my fellow dragons whenever someone needs help. I thought you and my home were in danger. I couldn't just sit on that. Thorn put a claw on her bed. If we had that oath back in my days in the Scorpion Den, a lot of this might not have ever happened, she laughed. But seriously, Prairie, you are something special. Thor noticed the still-thinking look on the other Sandwing's face and frowned. What is it? Oh, Prairie began. It's nothing. I was just thinking. Maybe Vulture was right about some stuff. Thorn looked at the ground, muscles stiff. I overheard what you two were talking about before I came in. He was wrong, Prairie. He knew nothing of love, not in a long time. It's so sad to see dragons turn out this way, especially seeing what they could be. But we can't make their choices for them, and we can't go back to the past to change things. We can only be there as they grow now, and I think with enough care, no other standing will take his path. Prey nodded, understanding. Thank you, Queen Thorn, she said. For everything. Not just tonight, but the impact you've had on my home. On me. Scorpion Den loves and misses you. Thorn smiled, moving to sit on the edge of Prairie's infirmary bed. Well, I think they'll have a mighty fine leader in their talons. If she's up for the job. Prairie saw Thorne's eyes locked on hers, and the two breathed quietly against the silence. She's talking about me. It'd be the biggest honor of my life, your majesty, she said. I'll see what I can do. And even if I don't think I should be the one commanding forces or giving orders, I can show the love for the den the ways I always have, by being there for the dragons I love. Thorne's face lit up in a great smile, and Prairie couldn't help but return the expression. Me, the leader of the Scorpion Den. I'm not sure. But the one thing I know is I will never take away what makes me who I am. I will never allow anything or anyone to take my love from me. That's what a true leader does. And that's why Thorn is our queen. Whoa there, you really took down the vulture? Yucca said, smiling. My trainee did all of that? Should have seen it to believe it, Prairie said, laughing. He's gone now, Yucca. And the others? What about Mamba, Outpost, and his other followers? They're in prison, awaiting their trials. They'll be punished, and in the right way. No one Sandwing is going to try to find his own justice for what he believes is wrong. No more vultures. That night, Prairie found herself watching the moons for the first time in a while. She felt their sil silvery glow on her scales, and the soft light reflecting in her eyes. I don't know what's going to happen next but I know I have all the dragons I care about to face it with me. We will heal. 
we're the scorpion den. And we're all going to be there for each other no matter what. If it's a lesson I'll make sure the dragonettes of my home know never to forget. And that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much to everybody who helped make this tale a reality through polls and who's watched this whole video. It means the absolute world to me and I cannot thank you enough for your support. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know your own thoughts down below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.